Hello, Hello Daniela. Hello, Dr. Balo. Hi, uh, I would just like to welcome everyone to our chat room with Dr. Balo, who will be answering uh, the questions from the presentation on uh, nano education. Uh, I would like to thank the presence of everyone here with us. Uh, I would like to give a special welcome to Dr. Balo. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're very excited to uh, learn more as we have with your presentation. So before we get started, you, you can have the words. <clears throat> My pleasure, thank you very much for the invitation. It's important to talk about these topics. It's, it usually stay in the background and It's especially important to talk about them honestly. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, I guess we can get started. Can you uh, hear me well? Can I'm you sorry? hear me well? Can you yes, hear me well? Okay, you have a bit of okay. a feedback. Okay, um, we have the first question here with us uh, from Milena. She says, amazing presentation. Thank you. I want to know about what you think is the main problem around the dissemination of pseudoscience as a science. Well, first of all, we must be in any email. I have a feedback. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to mute myself. Okay. Thank you. So, first of all, uh, as I will try to describe it briefly, the original purpose <clears throat> of uh, scientific publication has very much changed, and now it has become an, uh, much more of an existential need. Uh, someone uh, I, I, someone uh, called it the way that many papers are written not to be read, but to registered. So, and then we all know what, uh, what is this. The essential problem is uh, that uh, we scientists uh, fail to provide, at least not yet, it's, it's in progress. An evaluation system uh, which the administrative and leadership of an institute can be can use, they will never come up with that because that's not their specialty. Their specialty, they, they need to know something. That is one. Second, <clears throat> it is impossible to tell, foretell years ahead what could be the influence or the significance of a scientific uh, observation. I happen to know the person who got the Nobel Prize for <clears throat> the NMR machine. And he said, we never thought about the Nobel Prize. We just, we've been just curious what happens if the kick uh, something in a magnetic field, uh, they kick it with an uh, uh, ER radiation, that's all. So it, it is hard to tell, but it at least according to uh, really scientific data, it takes about five years to figure out that uh, certain things, uh, the citations disappear, other things keep growing, and typically the paradigm changing uh, inventions or uh, observations, they are rejected for the first time because they don't fit really. So you can be misfit two ways, either bad or too good. <laughs> it doesn't fit the system. So it's a continuous struggle. There is no uh, magic wand that could fix that. And uh, because the authors must publish and uh, as I said, must publish in high impact, impact on what? Journals uh, that uh, then, then what happens is, okay, if the task is to write more, uh, more papers, then we write more papers, no problem. But I also have to say uh, a little bit going ahead 
that it is very much different in the natural sciences and and uh, or other fields. It's it's quite different. So that uh, the question or the main problem around the dissemination of pseudoscience is uh, and, and number three, we never know everything. We are never sure what exactly belongs to the real part of the science. There is always things that uh, will be rejected, always things that will be just uh, become too old uh, part of it, and there are other things that has not been accepted yet. So what we what we do at our place is we make sure that the data is real. And even the conclusions, even between different experts, they might differ. But if your conclusions are not better than your data, so it's very important to, to start on the bottom, the data and the information. And that's where we are in scientific publications that we distribute information and we distribute, try to distribute knowledge. Thank you for your answer, Dr. Balo. I agree with you. It's a very complicated topic and scientists <laughs> like you are very important. I'm just the messenger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question is from Andre. He says, how can we improve the replication of scientific studies and make replication a normal and a essential part of science? Many articles and uh, periodicals are paid. Does this not hinder the dissemination of serious science? <clears throat> well, the certain academies like the Dutch Royal Dutch Academy is already called for uh, the replication studies, but uh, the old habits still there, which uh, you might remember that the requirement of originality, it comes from the fact that you cannot sell something with somebody else property. So it's, a, it's an old rule came from uh, almost medieval England <clears throat> made up, uh, with the book printed, book uh, printing in Gutenberg that you, you transfer your rights to your content, to your article, to a publishing company. And so you don't own it anymore, which means there is no reason to do or promote uh, <clears throat> studies that, uh, and there is no time to promote studies, uh, honestly, uh, that uh, look at the reliability because you would you publish the same thing that, okay, we are so sorry, what we published two years ago, that was really bad. We, 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 we destructed. Now it is working now, at least for fake, publications more and more are discovered because uh, these tools help uh, uh, large language models and all the other they have both sides both the writing and the discovery of what, what, what was right so <clears throat> again our, this is a complex uh, topic but we uh, personally uh, in our journal we do promote and we do allow not only uh, these kind of application studies, but also those which you have a hypothesis in the beginning, and it turns out to be wrong. That is also a very important piece of information, where, where not to go, not only those that where to go, where not to go. Right, I agree with you, Dr. Ballo. Um, the next question is from Agnes. She says, um, this topic is very interesting. Thank you very much for your presentation. How can we transform information from articles specifically written for scientists into more accessible knowledge? I have, uh, I have a curiosity to ask, is it possible to escape from the uh, comp computational code that always Suggests popular information instead of the true ones? Great question. 
Yes, actually, this is, these are two questions. So the first one, uh, those that specify to translate, uh, transform information from articles written uh, specifically for scientists, that is uh, <coughs> education. Education for scientists also to be able to simplify, really understand, simplify, and describe what they found uh, for a larger group of people. Uh, more, for almost, as I said, we, we now we publish for everybody. The second part of the education is education of journalists, science journalists, who should be able to understand at least the base of it. And the number three is, which we don't really have influence of, not chasing the hype all the time and the sensationalism because they must sell newspapers. And it's definitely, it's, it became a big problem with the, with these archive uh, preprints because most of the information, most of the sensational information unchecked and unreviewed from uh, were taken from the archives. I gave a few examples of that. <clears throat> which is originally was uh, very properly uh, advertised that now you can stake out of your area. I was the first to find this, which is fine, but uh, it should not be taken as, as, as science. It's a, really a preliminary knowledge. The second question, how can we escape the, from these codes? Uh, I don't know. That's that's up to the uh, owners of Twitter and Facebook and all the others, social media, which is again, as I said, the business model is uh, likes, how many likes you have, how exciting that information is, not truth, it's affirmation. Especially they you know, tried. What I do personally, I do not subscribe to YouTube or TV is nothing. I want the general thing just put ahead of me. If they're still following you, they be aware. But if you sign up and you, you feel the interest, you're not going to see anything else. Yes, that's just Thank you so much for your answer. I agree with you. It's very important to do your research and not just believe anything on the internet. Uh, the next question is also from Agnes. She says, you also mentioned the trade-off between quantity and quality when pu publishing an article. What is your uh, perspective on this? Considering by, uh, the evaluation by the committee, what would you be more favorable, a larger number of pub publications or their quality? Well, the, <clears throat> thank you. So the issue is here that it's not either or, it's and, quantity and the quality. Of course, the, the quantity is easy to measure, quality is hard to tell, and uh, there was an article uh, recently, I think it was in Nature or Science, honestly, I don't remember, but that clearly showed that most of the Nobel laureates could not qualify in uh, in the UK, could not qualify for a professorship because they did not publish the high <laughs> impact factor journals, which is just insane as it is. So it it's like, <clears throat> I usually give that example. So if we add together all the publications of everybody in the audience right now, we calculate a number and what does it say about any of us individuals as part? Nothing. What does it say about a meeting? Well, it's something. It's, it says that it, it shows the average level of something. But again, average uh, scientists know that average, first of all, not just one kind of average, many different types of average, and distribution, both very important. So uh, that was the long answer. The short answer is both should be uh, taken into account, but the quality cannot be uh, decided that what 
impact factor journals it was it was published because the only difference is the assumed prestige and nature which is a great uh, paper uh, a great journal <coughs> a great magazine sorry not journal uh, that had more than 150 years to establish that and because it's hard to get in it will assume that's the best one they are they are, they are the best one nature and science the best magazines to overall use to reviews and everything that's that's no question about it but uh, their uh, number of retracted articles actually higher than all the others Stars included several of them. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vallo. Uh, we have many questions here for you. Uh, the next one is also from Andret. Thank you, Andre. Uh He says, how can we ensure that scientific publications maintain high standards of quality and reliability? Well, again, uh, this is something we also try at the Precision Nanomedicine try to uh, achieve. Uh, we have a high quality editorial board and we don't ask for critiques. Pointing out, first of all, the people who are authors who write, they usually not the top professors, usually it's a postdoc, or a PhD student or a junior peop junior people who are still learning how to do this. And almost never ever and no places where this is taught how to write scientific articles. Again, I'm limiting myself into natural sciences. So I'm, I know very little about uh, how to write a, a good article in English literature. I don't know, <laughs> honestly. So, <clears throat> The editors and the, uh, editorial boards supposed to, in my view, supposed to teach the authors and help them publish and not uh, destroy them with, with the critics and just kick them away. So we have a category that reject with hope, which means that it's, it's a half-cooked meal, my friend. Why don't you finish it? Why don't you arrange it in a way that it tells a story? Nobody is interested in what did you do in the lab and how much, uh, which is often a, a, a mistake of junior people. People want to read a story about this topic. This is what we know, this is what we found. Is it, we, we think that either or this way, that rather works that way. And then, then it's an interesting thing that helps others. If it doesn't help anybody else, then it's just another publication for publication to be counted. <clears throat> By the way, just just uh, just interject. A few Nobel Prize winners, Nobel winners, have not. They don't, they don't have a lot of publications. It was just very high influence. In the, in the later uh, as it developed later. So, okay. High standards. Well, how can? Sorry, I'm, I'm. I'm again. You need to control me to not to talk about something else, <laughs> which is part of it. But how can we ensure that society remains in high standards? Uh, help the authors publishing. Make sure that the data are good. That then the methods uh, used are appropriate and uh, and uh, those data actually make sense from the point of view of the conclusions and that's it now it brings up another uh, bunch of uh, problems of, of course but that's that's a short answer thank you dr Vallo. uh moving on to ulysses question he says Recently, there was a there was the Nobel Foundation organized, and I'm sorry, the Nobel Foundation organized an event about misinformation and disinformation. There, it was evident that the most important of them was to avoid nowadays it's disinformation, and that is a close relationship between disinformation and power. What do you consider 
are the policy mechanisms and instruments to avoid that technology. And then he states uh, artificial intelligence and other general purpose technologies, uh, which could uh, create more gaps, social, environmental, and economical, instead of being helpful to close them together. The, yes, thank you for the question. It's, it's, it's an important one. So remember science, politics, and economy, and business. In a simple way, these are never these all the three work together, but they are never agree. The politics uh, pushes often uh, disinformation or some part of the information which, which uh, actually makes them look better. Uh, same applies for business, but for science and for scientists, they must try to be objective and stay objective. And not to fall into that. So we cannot avoid, in, different, in other words, we cannot avoid the disinformation in generally the media, but we can minimize it in the scientific uh, media, scientific publications. And uh, <clears throat> what I mentioned about the journal impact factor earlier, where the overall quantity, quality is divided by the quantity instead in my view, it, it, it's wrong for the person because what matters is how many good things you did, how many times, and not how many good things you did on average. That's, that's two different things, absolutely different things. So AI. AI, uh, first of all, I don't like call it AI because that's just a marketing term. We have seen too many AI movies with uh, fantastic robots that they can turn from cars into people and blah, 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 blah. So they overpower everything and everybody and everywhere. That's not it. This is also a marketing campaign. All, however, the large language models, yes, they are very, very helpful, in, but they are tools. And tools, just like every tool, can be used for all kinds of purposes. With a knife, you can cut bread and you can cut somebody's throat. Is it the problem of the knife? I don't think so. So that's what, uh, what uh, we use it for. And from this point of view, again, for naturalist scientists, I'm not afraid that uh, these large language models, Bard and Chad GPT and other others, are going to be harmful and we allow them actually, but they has to, that it has to be shown that, okay, no problem. Because by nature, they generate the average most probable answer. But in natural scientists, we are looking for the outliers, the new things. ChatGPT cannot generate new things, but it knows everything what's published. The problem is that everything is published has a certain segment, which is invalid, which is wrong. And uh, drawing from the most, all the available facts, the most probable conclusion doesn't lead to a new conclusion. It, could, it leads to an average conclusion, the most probable conclusion. So that's why I believe that's not the problem. It will have issues with the social and economical issues. We just talked about it, politics, science, economy. So that policy mechanisms, that's a good question. I'm not a politician, so I, I don't know, but they, it will be regulated as everything else, and there will be lawyers who work on that regulation and trying to keep it, and all the uh, all the bad things are regulated in our life as they still exist, <laughs> but we try to keep them minimal. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ballow. I agree with you. We have to be very careful and also think that it yeah. is the statistical the, uh, machine. I'm, I'm sorry, that when one of my uh, good colleagues uh, said that ChatGPT and BARD, yeah. BARD uh, they are like a very intelligent intern. Very, very helpful, but you have to look and, and supervise them what they are doing. <laughs> yes. 
be very careful with this generation. <laughs> okay, Doc <laughs> Dr. Balog, uh, the next question is from Carla. She says, thank you very much for your talk. It was truly agreeable to listen to you. My question is, since we are facing problems in the publication system, how do you think we have we how do you think that we should address it personally i like the boycott to the companies question mark systematically like the creating uh different rules what do you think about that so the established uh, commercial publishing is is a business with all that uh, takes it around and uh, and they cannot exist we can without it because it has uh, very very deep rules and and uh, roots and that could, could be and is very useful however recently uh, because of out uh, because of other uh, influencing uh, issues like uh, for example the recent pandemic when people didn't work money was given out without uh, uh, value behind it, and now people complain about uh, uh, that uh, the value of their money is dec decreasing. Inflation. We have this. We have less stuff. We have more money. What does it mean? So that that the same and similar things are happening in that everybody's trying to find the maximum acceptable range. And this is already there was a there were boycotts and there were new contracts uh, signed with the uh, commercial publishers and and so on. So this is one tool. The second is the so-called free publications, free uh, society publications are growing. That these are supported by. The universities and libraries and uh, independent scientists like like ours uh, that have uh, that non-profit arguments and uh, make sure to, you you can be sure that a journal that does not need uh, APCs publishing costs does not charge that cannot be predatory. Predatory for what? There is no reason. There is no way it could be predatory. And but these are many times are much smaller than the order the big ones they established, and we need both. So the smaller ones numbers are increasing, and the, the bigger ones they uh, buy each other out, and the number is increasing, but still control the the, the, the market. Uh, the sixth biggest company controls the, the, the market, 80% of the market. Thank you so much, Dr. Vala, for your answer. Uh, I'm afraid that's all okay. the time that I'm we sorry. have. I'm sorry, again, I, for, I, I failed to answer the questions. Support those smaller journals that try to do good with you. The problem is that first, then, as long as the administration goes for the impact factor and uh, has signed a contract that you're going to need to publish uh, in three years a paper in a impact factor five or better, uh, or impact factor three or better journal, then it's very hard, very hard. But we just have to keep pushing. So long term values need a lot of time to, again, re establish. I think Thank, you. Thank you, Dr. Bala. I wish we could stay here longer. We have many more questions, but uh, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this chat room. We will be sending in all the questions that are left to, so you can answer them more patiently. I would like to um, thank you so much on behalf of our committee for your acceptance on our Congress. It's been an honor um, the, having this time with such a great scientist as yourself. Um, I thank hope you. to see you next time, and thank you so much, Dr. Be Ballo. You're very welcome, and uh, again, try to find us and we try to support you. Thank you so much for your help. See yeah, you. Hi. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next um, lecture. Obrigada a todos. Vejo vocês na próxima palestra.